Welcome back, it's me, Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review. And today we are taking a look at this right here. Um, it is Superboy Prime from Infinite Crisis, and he belongs to the DC Multiverse line by McFarlane Toys. Okay, so today is uh, Thursday, December 9th, 2021. Um, and I just received this figure this afternoon um, from Amazon. Um, I purchased it from Amazon maybe like... I, I want to say I got the pre-order in uh, maybe a month ago, um, I believe. Oh no, I take it back. It, was, it wasn't a month ago. It was actually maybe like a week or two ago. I got confused with something else. So I placed a pre-order for this uh, maybe a week or two ago. Um, and it shipped out... Uh, earlier in the week and they said I wasn't going to get it until Saturday but lo and behold it came early for some reason so I wasn't anticipating this um, but I wanted to do a review as soon as possible just so I could get this out tomorrow morning um, so yeah we're going to take a look at Superboy Prime and I'm excited about this figure but at the same time um, <laughs> the character itself kind of intimidates me because I would like to go into the history of the character a little bit because um, unless you're like a comic book fan, Superboy Prime's one of those characters that if you're just an action figure collector, you're not going to be able to really appreciate what the character is about. But at the same time, as a comic book reader, it's like he's one of those characters, he has a kind of a complicated history. And I don't think I'm the best person to kind of like uh, reiterate his biography and condense it in a form that's presentable <laughs> in this video. Because I would like you as a viewer to be able to take something away from this video other than... Oh, here's the figure, here's the articulation, whatnot. Um, you know, I'd like to leave a good impression on you that, you know, this is a very significant character. And maybe if, if it could, encourage you to, like, go back and actually pick up and read a comic book or two or something. Um, you know, t as your gateway drug into the world of um, comic books. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah we're going to take a look at um, uh, Superboy Prime here um, from McFarlane Toys. So, this iteration, the character of this... So, this iteration... Um, of the character represents his appearance in Infinite Crisis, which was a comic book event some years ago. Um, uh, I believe this was 2006. I think it says right there, Jim Lee, 2006. So we're looking at a uh, character. The character is much older than that. Um, I, I believe the character maybe debuted in 1985. Um, uh, I think he was a part of Crisis on Infinite Earths, I believe. So this is where I get really confused. Anytime, uh, especially with DC and Marvel, we start talking about multiverses, parallel Earths, and you know multiple different versions of characters, it, I get lost. I mean, so this is technically Car Clark Kent from a different parallel Earth, and he's not to be confused with our Clark Kent. And even though he's Superboy Prime, he's not to be confused with, um, you know, the modern. Superboy, Connor Kent. So anytime there's multiple characters with the same names, multiple characters across different universes and parallel Earths, I get confused. So to help us out with that, um, uh, we're going to take a look at the bio that came with this guy. So this is Superboy Prime as made by Mattel. And he belonged to this. Um, this was the DC Classics. Or this was toward the end of DC Classics. This was when it was DC Universe Classics. And um, this was their All-Stars line. So this was later in the DC Universe Classics line. Um, at, at some point, a couple of years later, it became a DC Multiverse. But towards the end of the DC Universe Classics, um, this was the All-Stars. And this was their interpretation of Superboy Prime, which is the same as this figure. So basically, these are going to be... We're looking at two different artist interpretations of the same character. Um... So the bio for uh, Superboy Prime that came with uh, the All-Star figure is as follows. So this is the back of the card. Um, biography. In a parallel world where DC superheroes are, fic are fictional comic book characters, a teenage boy named Clark Kent discovered he has the same powers as Superman. Donning the Man of Steel uniform, he became Superboy Prime and joined forces with heroes from other worlds to defeat the Anti-Monitor in the crisis on infinite earths. After witnessing his heroes become darker and ineffective, Superboy Prime became disillusioned and decided to change the world himself. 
His actions led to the infinite crisis, resulting in great destruction across the galaxy. So he's one of the Superboys or evil versions of Superman. So this is a bad guy, all right? <laughs> to sum it up, this is a bad guy. His armor um, is very inspired by the Anti-Monitor, um, who was, I believe was the major villain in Crisis on Infinite Earths. That's a story that I've read years, years, years ago. I don't think I even finished it, to be honest. Um, it was a book that one of my college instructors recommended to me. Because during like the mid-80s, I was, still a little, I was still kind of a kid, and I wasn't really into comic books until much later. Um, but, yeah, so this is Superboy Prime. Um, real quick, so as I stated earlier, he belonged to the, the near end of the DC Universe Classics line. And this is when they're putting out the All-Stars. Um... I want to say by this time, I think they might have abandoned the Build-A-Figure, I think. They might have done a couple here and there, but I think by this point in time, the Build-A-Figure uh, might have been done with, and I think they resurrected it later on when they started Multiverse. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. It, my my memory is kind of hazy during this time period. So if I'm wrong on that, just correct me in the comments below. So towards the end of the DC Universe Classics line... Um, they gave us some characters. I remember the line being heavily um, uh, influenced by like a lot of Superman and Batman characters towards the end of the All-Stars line. Uh, like for example here, um, the other characters in this wave was like the New 52 Superman, the New 52 Batman. Uh, we got Red Robin and then we got Superboy Prime. Um, Red Robin was from Kingdom Kama. And I think some of the later lines... Um, in the All-Stars lineup included characters from like some of the video games like Injustice and maybe the Arkham the Arkham Asylum games, I think. But yeah, so what we have here is we have Superboy Prime. So we're going to take a look at the McFarlane one first. Um, Alright, so real quick. Uh, he comes in the standard uh, McFarlane DC Multiverse packaging. It's that giant rectangle box. On the side, Superboy Prime from Infinite Crisis. On the back, um, some fig photography. It's a nice uh, illustration of Superboy Prime. Again, I say this all the time. Um, I, would, I would prefer it if they still gave us the comic book image. But I've learned to accept that. But at the same time, I'd appreciate it if they at least gave us a bio on the character. Like, I thought it's awesome how Mattel would give us a bio on the figure here. You know, it lets you know who this dude is. You know, there are a lot of people that collect action figures nowadays, and they don't necessarily read the comic books. So they're not going to be familiar with this character. They might, have a deep, they might have a deep appreciation for the toy, and, you know, the points of articulation, the paint application, and, you know, just because the figure looks awesome. But at the same time, you know, as someone who's a comic book fan, I'd love to be able to pull more readers into, like, reading comic books. So I think it'd be great if, you know, if they just list, gave a short bio, much like Mattel did, and, you know, just describe the character in general. Um, other figures that are currently out is Dr. Fate, there's Etrigan the Demon, uh, the Sean Gordon Murphy Bat Cycle, the Todd McFarlane designed Wonder Woman, and King Shazam. Uh, the McFarlane toys always surprise me because I never know what's going to be on the shelves sometimes. Like, um, it's, you know, more often than not, I'll go to like a Target and I'll see McFarlane figures on the shelves that, you know, might not pop up on Amazon for like another month or two. So it's kind of weird. But in this case, you know, Superboy Prime popped up on Amazon before I found them at retail. So, um, I'm not going to complain. I'm glad I got them. Um. All right, so we have Superboy Prime as he is um, seen in the comic book Infinite Crisis. First impressions of the figure while he's still in the tray. It looks cool. Um, I kind of have some reservations, though, about some of the use of the colors. But we'll go into that in a little bit. Um, it looks great. The sculpting looks well done. The cape is very dynamic. And uh, I'm not sure if I like that or not. But it's a great sculpt nonetheless. Um, he does come with a flight stand, which we're not going to take a look at. Um, you know, I'm sure there's another YouTuber out there who will review it. 
as I've stated before, half the time I'm a mint in box, mint on card collector, so I'm just going to leave this as it is because I don't want to ruin the bubble and rip it off the cardboard. Um, you also get the trading card. Uh, real quick, back to the stand. Um, I'm always on the fence about the, f the flight stands. Like, part of me kind of feels like it's, I love it. I think it's great, especially for characters that actually do fly. But at the same time, um, if you're one of those collectors that just likes displaying all your figures, you know, standing side by side on the shelf, you know, so they're kind of level with each other, the flight stand, it might be a, uh, it might not necessarily be for you. Um, so in some cases, as much as I appreciate it, I think it'd be awesome too if they gave you the standard black circle stand so you could just basically just stand the figure on its own without him flying. But there are some advantages to having a flight stand, especially if you're, just, if you're displaying this on your shelf. For example, if you have a display shelf and maybe your um, display is maybe like, for example, three or four rows deep of figures, um, sometimes if you don't have like elevated steps in your display, um, it's hard because all your figures are kind of level with one another, and you know if, if your if your real estate isn't a whole lot, you know you, your your display might be feel kind of condensed. But with the nice thing with the flight stand, it automatically elevates some characters so that they're higher. So if you have characters that fly, you can put them further back in like a, a, a like maybe for example like the third or fourth row, and since they're floating, you know they're ahead of two above everyone else. So there's some advantages to displaying a figure on a flight stand. But at the same time, as a collector and someone who sometimes displays their toys, I'd love to have like just the plain standard black stand, you know, because I don't feel the need to always have flying characters fly. Sometimes you just want them standing there just looking cool. All right, enough about that. Here's Superboy Prime. Um, let's get him out. Alright, so we have Superboy Prime. Uh, he, Superboy in his anti-monitor inspired body armor. Um, I can tell you this, I really like that face sculpt. Uh, the face sculpt is very clean. It kind of, it captures the essence of Superboy pretty well. Um, he doesn't look as maniacal or as evil as he could sometimes be. Um, he looks very, in this uh, facial expression looks very determined and I can appreciate that and it's a younger ver I mean it is Superboy so he's a younger interpretation of Superman but at the same time I, I like this head enough that you know if there's a Superman figure that you're not too keen on the head sculpt and you want a younger version of Superman this is a good option here you know because figures you could swap this head out put on another Superman body and you might have a younger Superman who's you know, has this look. It looks, the face is really well done. The hair sculpting is awesome. Um, but I'm having, all right, so I do have some issues with this figure. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but let's just take a look at him and appreciate him for what he is. All right, proportion wise, uh, he looks nice. Um, in terms of the size, I kind of wish I had another figure on me, but I don't. Um, this real quick, he's about, about seven and a quarter inches tall. Um, he's considerably a lot, um, in terms of his body frame, a lot thinner than I expected. Uh, but he is, you know, Superboy, so he's not going to be as bulked out as Superman. Um, the blue on his costume is noticeably a darker, I believe, than some of the other Superman costumes we've gotten. I might be wrong on that though, but this is something that kind of caught my eye. It's a much deeper, richer blue than I'm than I'm used to, but I like it a lot. Um, yeah, so the head's really well done. The sculpting on the emblem is really nice too. The S is embossed, so it's not a flat symbol. You can actually feel the impressions and like the peaks and valleys. 
Um, likewise, the sculpting on the shoulder pads, really well done. Same with the hoses. A couple of rivets along his collar. Uh, the folds on the back, really well sculpted. There's a nice flow to them. As I stated earlier, this cape is not necessarily in a neutral pose. As you can see, the cave's kind of like flowing dynamically. And much like I've pointed out in other videos, for whatever reason, um, they always feel the need to like sculpt the cape so that one ends lower to the ground than the other. So it's very asymmetrical in its design. Um, if you're if, if you're a collector who likes to display your figure standing up on the shelf, um, and it, like I said, if real estate's like a important issue with you, this cape might get in the way, just because it kind of flows out a little. Um, I do like it on some action figures when the cape's very neutral and it just strictly just flows down. Once you start kind of like exceeding the width of the figure, kind of like um, it, like you know, it starts breaking into like the personal space of other figures, and it, that could be problematic if you're a, a display um, doesn't have a whole lot of shelf space. But in terms of a dynamic cape flowing like this, it makes sense if you put it on the flight stand. It just makes the figure look a little bit a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more impressive. Um, okay, so enough about that. Let's start talking about. Um, the articulation of the figure. Um, his head rotates. Uh, he could look down. Uh, that's far down, I think, as you'll look, which is all right. Now, this is one of the, me being kind of nitpicky, but anytime you have a character who, you know, can fly, and Superman can definitely fly, it always bothers me that they can never tilt their head, you know, fully back for like when they're in flight position. So when they're flying um, horizontally, you know, their head could like peek forward. Here, his head doesn't, doesn't, there's no give in terms of it leaning back. I believe partially it's because of this collar piece here. So it's going to hinder the movement going back. So his head, it doesn't really want to go back, unfortunately. So if you want to have this guy flying, unfortunately, it's he's just going to be flying vertically. You know, you're just going to have him floating as opposed to like actually soaring. You know, he can't tilt his head back far enough. Um, I think his neck is, right? So this is one of those figures where his neck and his, is like connected to the torso. It's So it's not like the neck's a separate articulated piece. Um, in terms of his arms, they can rotate up, but they're gonna hit these shoulder pads right here and these shoulder pads, they don't real. Even though they're made of a softer rubber plastic, they don't have a whole lot of give. So you're gonna find yourself, you know, this is as far as it's gonna rotate. Um, they do rotate outward like this. Um, there is a butterfly joint on the inside, which you can see right there. So you have some extended range of motion. Uh, going back though, it's going to hit the cape, so it's always going to push back forward, so you can get some resistance from the cape there. Moving forward though, um, the butterfly joint is kind of pointless because he has such a, a wide chest and also a tall chest, so his, the inside of his biceps always going to hit his chest when he try to move his arms inward. Um, he has a cut beneath the chest line above his abdomen, so he does have that mid torso um, rotation and it's nice because it actually clicks into place so it feels like it's ratcheted it doesn't feel like it's just like a standard ball joint it every time you, it has like a couple of indents so when you rotate it it'll lock into place which has its pros and cons but it does feel nice um, in terms of his ab crunch um, even though he does have this cut below his chest line it doesn't really want to move forward and it doesn't really want to move back. So it seems like the purpose of the cut here is primarily just for swiveling. Um, he has a cut on the waist, so it allows for waist swivel, as you can see here. Um, he could slightly move forward, but not a whole lot. Going back though, at the waist, you get a nice arch. So even though he, couldn't, he can't tilt his head back, at least you could put him in some sort of a flight position so he's soaring forward, even though it looks kind of awkward. Um, uh, 
you could kind of see the engineering on the inside here. It has that rubber diaper. Now, one of the legs here, it might be, it just might be my figure, but the leg here on the on the on his right side, it tucks in cleanly underneath his like, I don't know, his briefs. But on the on his left side, as you can see here, it's it doesn't want to stay underneath his briefs. It kind of like juts out a little at the edge here and I can't get it to just stay in place so I don't know if that's an issue with my figure or if that's just the nature of the way it's sculpted so yeah it's unfortunate it's not a it's not clean on this side as on this side so you can see the leg tucks in very cleanly underneath his, underneath his briefs where on this side not so much and I can't get it to situate properly it could just be my figure because this is a very soft plastic and maybe it, when it was casted it, it's it didn't form properly but it's kind of dis disappointing that i can't get the leg to, to rest perfectly underneath his briefs so that kind of bothers me a little uh there is no thigh cut so there's no thigh swivel um his legs can't turn in or out at all you know, there's a little bit of play, but not a whole lot. Um, he could kick forward, but it doesn't, it doesn't, want, it's not, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know what's stopping it. It might be this rubber diaper again. It's, it's not allowing the leg to kick forward that high. So there's some issues with, with his, um, not necessarily the articulation, but the range of motion. This leg kicks up a little bit higher. This one, uh, not so much. So uh, there's some issues there. He could kick outward, so he could super kick. Um, but then what, if he kicks out too far, all right, so uh, yeah, it gets super gappy. So if he kicks out too far, it gets super gappy and it exposes the engineering on the inside. I don't think we have this issue with other figures. Um, at least if we did, I, I didn't notice it, but for this one, it seems pretty extreme. So yeah, if he's sp spreading his legs out, granted, I don't think, I don't think you're ever going to pose him. So he's like doing the splits, but you know, it, there's just, it goes out enough that it'll start getting gappy. And like I said before, for some reason, this leg doesn't situate perfectly underneath his briefs. So when I move it, you see how it folds in. Whereas on this one, is situated perfectly underneath. So when you move it, it still remains tucked underneath. This one, not so much. And it's hard to reset it back to normal. So I do have some issues with that. Um, his knees are his knees are well done. It's sculpted really well. And where, they're, where the cuts are, it's, um, it's not that it's seamless, but it's a very smooth transition. So it's a pretty decent knee. Um, I'm liking that a lot. Uh, he has no boot swivel. Um, he does have some articulation in his ankles. But these ankle guards that drop down pretty far kind of prevent movement. You know, So this is as far as it's going to rotate. His toes are articulated like this. Um, the arms. Um, I'm not sure if we talked about elbows. He has double pinned elbows. Uh, wrist articulation. Um, there's that McFarlane ball joint that always kind of bothers me. It's almost like a tennis ball between his hand and his forearm. So even though these ho he has all these hoses, which the real costume have, but it just seems like they get in the way. Um, I don't want to say they hinder the articulation because, you know, he can still move around and stuff, but it just seems bothersome having all these hoses on him. But that's the nature of this guy's costume, so. Alright, so I do I do like this character a lot. Um, the figure, it's, it's nice, but I have a couple of issues with it. Like I said before, um, in terms of his, his briefs here, his underwear, it doesn't, is, on this leg, I'm not sure if this is my figure, it's, it doesn't rest well underneath here. So that's one problem. I have the problem when you extend the leg, even just slightly out, it gets kind of gappy. 
Um, these hoses, they're nice. They're a nice detail that's authentic to the character, but it just feels kind of cumbersome and it makes the figure kind of difficult to handle a little. Uh, the one leg doesn't kick out as far as the other, so that's another issue I have. Um, I'm not keen on this color scheme either. Uh, and we'll go over that in a second. Uh, the cape is sculpted really well. Um, now, I'd prefer a new, like a neutral cape where it just flows down, but that might be that might just be subjective. If I had to rate this figure numerically um, on a scale of one to ten, uh, based on appearance, like from a distance, I'd say an eight. But the minute you handle him, it's an easy six and a half. For me, there's this, there's just this issues with it. He feels kind of clumsy and cumbersome. He has a butterfly joint, but it's pointless because it doesn't want to do anything moving forward. And when you go back, it hits the cape. I have issues with this rubber diaper deal because it's not, it's not conforming well to um, his hips over here. Um, paint application wise, it's nice, it's clean. I'm not keen on this silver they're using either. It's kind of like a pearlescent silver. And, but it kind of reminds me of like, if you're a transformer collector, there's always that swirly gray. And even though th this isn't that swirly gray color, it just reminds me of it. And I'm not sure if this silver is even accurate to the, his appearance in the comic book. So yeah, I don't want to sound like I'm hating on this figure. I'm just being honest, you know? So I do love the character. I think the character from a distance looks great, but the minute you handle him, it just feels weird. Um, I'm not keen on this yellow color they used on the, the piping. It's it's too loud and it fights the rest of the, the costume too much. I'm not sure if it's a contrast thing. You know, if we compare it to this guy here, you know, this is a much older figure. Um, and to be honest, his face is horrible. It looks like he ran his head into a wall. I mean, just look how flat his face is. Um, but I love the shade of uh, gold they used for the piping here. You know, here it's this yellow. It looks and it looks very toy like. This it feel it looks a little bit more metallic, and I can appreciate that. It ha it feels a little bit more sophisticated. Um, these this this shade of blue for me feels more authentic to the comic book. This is a great shade of blue, but it doesn't feel as um, accurate to me, in my opinion. Uh, this figure, I mean, both of these figures represent the same character from the same comic book, uh, which is this here. We'll take a look at this in a second. Uh, but it's, you know, it's it's debatable about, about which figure you feel does a better job of representing the character portrayed here, um, because both of these Superboy Primes represent his appearance in Infinite Crisis. So this is issue number six. Um, and this was published in 2006. This is a cover by artist Jim Lee. Now, if you're just to base them on the... This is a very iconic image of Superboy Prime uh, when they did Infinite Crisis. And if you were to compare these two uh, figures to like which one looks the closest to this image here, it's almost a toss-up. Uh, for example, this guy here has the correct... Uh, briefs here, you know where the belt is it dips down Here it dips down here. The belt is like on top of his of his briefs um, They both have the proper symbol. I do think this one has a better sculpted and a much larger emblem Which I I think fits the character better. This emblem is too small for me In terms of the shoulder pauldrons uh, This one looks to be neither of them look accurate to the one Jim Lee drew. It's much more of like a ball Whereas this one, it kind of just drapes over his shoulders. Same with this one. Um, this one kind of has the moon boots, which this one uh, kind of has. This one has the pipes running down from the chests. This one doesn't have it. This one does. And then we go into the inside of the comic. Um, uh, let's find his appearance in here. Where is it? So yeah, I haven't read this comic like in ages. All right, so here he goes. Superboy's back. And he's taking on Black Adam. So in terms of um, uh, his appearance in the comic book. Yeah, so always keep in mind, these two figures represent his appearance in this comic book. 
So if you're a stick, if you're like a stickler for accuracy, um, you know, just keep that in mind. So as we see here. Color wise, his forearms, his, his boots, and his chest armor are blue. And as they're seen here, that's one of the things that caught my eye. I'm not sure if this is an artist taking liberties or if this is, you know, the creative direction they wanted to go for this figure, but um, there is no silver on this guy's costume. So that kind of bothers me. That's something I noticed in the promotional photos. Um, I would have liked it if it was blue. Um, there's more detail given on this character than here. You know, it's very streamlined, it's very smooth, very aerodynamic. For whatever reason, the artist, whoever sculpted this, felt the need to like enclose his collar even more and add all these tiny rivets. And the same with the boots here. The boots here are very streamlined in their detail. Here, you know, they added rivets, they added some guards, they added some vents. Um... This one, he has red feet, whereas this one is his silver boots all the way down. This guy has the red boots. Yeah, I don't want to... This is a... I remember read, like, uh, reading this comic, and there's some really cool moments in here. Especially when Superboy Prime takes on Connor Kent. And I don't want to turn the pages too much because it'll spoil it if you haven't read this. So again, um, I think this one is closer to the actual appearance in the comic book. Uh, this one, it looks like they took some creative liberties. So yeah, even though this is a, a beautifully sculpted figure, um, uh, there's some stuff that's better than the, the figure that we got from Mattel. But at the same time, there's some stuff that Mattel does that's closer in accuracy to the way he's portrayed in the comic book. All right, this is, I don't know if this review was weird. <laughs> it's just one of those things where I kind of just lost myself in, in all of this. Um, because it was, a, it was a toy I was looking forward to. It was a character I was very fond of during this time period when I was reading comic books. So I it's kind it's a, I kind of have mixed feelings about this. Like I, I love the fact that McFarlane's giving us a Superboy Prime to begin with. Um... But like I said, I don't. This could also be based off of a different interpretation from maybe a, another comic book or another artist. But when you pick up the box and it reads Superboy Infinite Crisis, you kind of want the way he's portrayed in Infinite Crisis. You know, he might have looked like this in another comic book, like maybe he looked like this, like in in the Sinestro War, or in like um, some of the other events or comic books he appeared in, like in Blackest Night. But if that's the case, you know. You know, don't label him as Infinite Crisis. Just call him Superboy Prime. Because for me, it's like you call, you call him Superboy Prime from Infinite Crisis. I'm going to expect something that looks closer to, like, you know, the way he's portrayed in the comic book, which is this guy. But this is a very dated figure. Um, you know, he has the torn cape, much like he does on the cover here, which I could appreciate. But, you know, this guy has a horrible looking face. It looks like he ran his head into a wall. It's so flat. But I do love the color scheme. I do love that the armor is closer to the comic book. But this guy, is he has such a beautiful head sculpt. I love the emblem on this one better. Um, the gold on this guy is better than the yellow. The boots here are more accurate than this one. So it's, for me, it's kind of a mixed bag. It's like, you know, they're both great figures. But it's still not perfect. And I don't know. Maybe I don't sound like I'm... You know, nitpicking too much, but you know, as someone that that's a comic book guy, and not that I'm a stickler for accuracy, it's it's like you know, don't deviate too far from the design. That's the way I kind of look at it. And you know, I know some. It's like, for example, like when they make movies and people get really bent out of shape, like oh, you know, Batman's costume looks too outrageous. It's not like it looks like in the comic book. You know, I sometimes get where people are coming from. Um, because, you know, my opinion is if it's not broke, don't, you know, don't fix it. And I kind of feel that way sometimes with comic book costumes in general. Like, you know, there's certain reasons why some characters have iconic looks that, that are timeless. You know, they always try messing around with Superman and Batman's look. Like, sometimes I feel that the comic book industries are like, like they're embarrassed sometimes of like the source material. And then, you know, for Superman, we get a bunch of figures and... Sometimes in the comic books, they'll remove his underwear, so he's just wearing a completely blue suit, and it looks weird. 
They'll do the same thing with Batman. You know, if he's wearing the the gray and black uniform, they'll remove his underwear, so it's just completely gray, and that looks weird too. And then they'll make then they'll change their mind five years later and like, you know what, we want to bring back that iconic look, and then they'll slap on his underwear on top of his tights again. Uh, same with Batman. It's like for the longest time they thought it was cool to have uh, the Batman emblem without the oval around it, and they're like, you know, we want to go more OG, get rid of the oval. But then, you know, some years later, like, no, let's put the oval back. It's always jumping back and forth. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think, you know, if it's if it's not broken, don't fix it. And that's the case with this. You know, I think Superboy's look um, in this comic book is pretty spot on. It's very clean. It looks nice. It doesn't deviate too far from Superman. It, you know, kind of echoes the look of Superman. But at the same time, when you see it, you think anti-monitor. This one, you look at it and... It's weird because it still has, you know, the anti-monitor elements, but with all the rivets and the, the, the contour lines and the sculpting of the armor, it almost kind of feels a weird and like almost steampunk-like. And for me, it's like the last thing I want people to think of is that this is like steampunk Superman. You know, it's not steampunk Superman. You know, it's supposed to be Superboy Prime. Yeah, I've gone full nerd mode on this video. So that's just me. Um, you know, don't hate me. I'm just kind of lost in my thoughts as I'm fiddling along with these action figures. So let's wrap this video up. It's twice as long as I expected it to be, but um, hopefully you pulled something away from this. Um, Superboy Prime, excellent comic book character. Every time he makes an appearance, it's an event. It's something special. And he deserves a great action figure. This is a decent figure. You know, if it's been on your radar, I suggest just get it. You know, if you're not a stickler for the comic book, just get it. You'll enjoy it. You'll love it. I just hope that you don't have some of the issues I did, like, you know, with issues with the rubber diaper here connecting to the leg. Um, uh, I'm sure we'll get a repaint. I mean, McFarlane always gives us repaints. They always give us new, like, reasons to the double dip i'm sure they'll give us a repaint with like the, the tattered cape so that'll probably eventually come down the pipeline and if this older figure interests you you know hunt them down on ebay I, I don't think the price on this guy's too bad um but he definitely you know looks dated you know especially this head sculpt it's horrible it's like one like the worst faces i've seen on an action figure Okay, once again, my name is Lou. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for your likes, comments, and support. I greatly appreciate it. If you're expecting a short review, I apologize. I didn't realize this would run that long. Um, I didn't realize I had <laughs> this many grievances about this figure. So until the next video, take care of yourself. Um, be safe, and most importantly, be happy. Buy lots of toys, and I'll talk to you at the next one. Later.